Hey everybody, welcome to week five of class. We are on to our third essay. Woohoo! That means we are halfway done. Good work. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about our compare and contrast essay. And I am going to point to a couple spots in our textbook. So if you have that available, as well as point out a couple things on the assignment for the week. So first, I want to point out the due dates because this falls over 4th of July holiday. Next week, you will be working on drafting. The rough draft is due by the end of the day on 4th of July, and the final draft is due July 7th, the Sunday night. So if you have fun plans to be out of town and camping and off the grid for a 4th of July weekend, make sure you are working ahead and submitting in time to meet those due dates. I do not accept late work, but you can always submit early. So make sure you're watching out for that. Now, our compare and contrast essay is uh, the chapter we're reading for this unit. So you'll learn a lot about a compare and contrast essay, but I wanted to point out a couple specific things that students typically struggle with. So the first point is on page 338 under the heading, why do we compare? And I think it's really important that Cooley points out that one of the main reasons we compare things is to discover differences between two subjects that we would otherwise expect to be similar, or on the other hand, in order to find similarities between two subjects that we might otherwise consider to be entirely different. So what we don't want to do is compare and contrast some really obvious things that most of our audience would know about, okay? Cats compared to dogs. Um, brothers compared to sisters. Hmm, actually that one could be kind of interesting. So, as you're working on brainstorming, think about topics where most people might say, oh, these are really similar, but you are gonna dig and find the differences. Or, on the other hand, something might topic might be, wow, those are so different, and you work to find the similarities. So really provide us as your readers a new perspective, a new understanding uh, of two items or two concepts, two things that we wouldn't have otherwise seen if you hadn't dug into that. All right. Want to make sure that your subject has enough in common to provide a solid basis of comparison. So make sure that there's at least enough to develop on both sides where they have still a touch point. On page 343, page 343, the book also talks about how we develop or organize a compare and contrast essay. And there's two main ways to do this. One is a subject-by-subject -subject essay, where first you cover everything about this subject, and then you cover everything about the second subject. Okay, so it's really chunked. Or the other way you can do it is a point-by-point -point comparison. So you might say, you flip-flop back and forth. This has this, but that has this. This has this, but that has this. This has this, but that has this. So you'll see there's a couple different ways to go about it. Or you could do a mix. You could do a little bit of subject, some point-by-point, -point, subject, point by point. And you'll see examples of that in the essays that you read for this week's discussion board. So be thinking about that because as part of the criteria requirement is that you have a clear structure using point by point and or subject by subject organization. So that's about all I have for right now. Be thinking about your topic. If you need to be working ahead because of 4th of July plans, please do so. And if you have any questions, reach out and uh, let me know. Have a good week.